Hey guys, well, I'm back again. Uh, this time, I'm not going to give you my picks this time. I'm going to wait till um, the Giants and Eagles game tonight, which I'm going to be watching. I think it should be an interesting game to watch, but I'm not going to give you my re records and stuff yet until everything's done for the week on that. So, I'm actually here to you today because I had um, one of my um, subscribers I watch. Not, yeah, I don't think he's one of my subscribers. I don't know. I haven't checked it yet. But I subscribed to him. His name's Kyle Snyder, a.k.a. Clifton. So you check him out, he's a cool guy, if you like football, or Star Trek, or things like that, or if you like reading books or something, he has a book that just came out, he just moved to Arizona, but, you know, check him out, he's, he's a cool guy. But anyway, as a Patriots fan, he did a, a top 10 uh, video of, of the New England Patriots of all time, so I figured I'd return the favor for um, top 10 greatest Colts players of all time, so... Uh, as a Patriots fan, I'm going to do that out of respect for him, which I'm going to give you my personal opinions about... Everything what happened last night on that and all about, the, about when my picks come along. So it might get a little entertaining about that. You know, I was entertained last night for, the, for that. I'll give you that. But anyways, we're going to try to do um, the top 10 um, Colts players of all time. We're going to start off with number 10, Webb Eubank, if I spelled, said that right. Anyways, you're probably thinking, who the hell is he? Well, anyways, Webb Eubank was a... Um, Head coach of the 60s. He was one of the best coaches on that decade. He was like before Vince Lombardi's time. Or Tom Landry's time. So, in fact, when he was head coach of the Colts, he was both the... I think Lombardi was the offensive coordinator, I think. And then Tom Landry was the defensive coordinator for the Giants around that standpoint in time. But anyways, in the 50s, he was, he was a 1958 coach of the year. He was a two-time NFL champion. But he's mostly known for being a Jets quarterback and win Super Bowl. I mean, quarterback, Jets um coach and, and winning Super Bowl three, one of the greatest upsets of all time against the Baltimore Colts. So, um, anyways, um, best th thing about him when, when he started the when he was head coach in the 1958 NFL Championship, he was the head coach of the Colts at the time, as facing um Tom Landry and um Vince Lombardi's um coordinators um gi as Giants. As, at that point, so, anyways, that that was one of the greatest games of all time, personally. And he was the head coach that started that. Then they got the ball first, and they screwed it, ran it in for the touchdown, and all that. But I'm not gonna give you any players who did what. But I'm not gonna. He was the one to design the plays of all in any point in that. But once he was involved in that, he was involved in that, and he put the NFL on the where it is today because of him. So I, that's why I put him as the greatest, uh, one of the top ten greatest Colts of all time. All because of what he did for the 1958 NFL Championship. Anyways, um, number nine, Lenny Moore. Lenny Moore was a, um, a, a running back. I think he was, I forget, I thought it was the 50s or, or 60s or something like that. But anyways, he's a seven-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Team All-Pro. Scored 63 rushing touchdowns and 48 receiving touchdowns. And he was probably one of the greatest running backs of his era. I thought he was in the 50-year anniversary one. Correct? Anyone correct me on that one? Correct me on that. I thought he was on that list, but I could be wrong. But but don't, Lenny, Lenny Moore was a good running back. I thought I think he was co was um, head coach of Reb Eubank at the time. I think he scored that game-winning touchdown, if I remember correctly. I I don't. I'm not thinking about the history right now, but I'm just giving what his resume. He was a he was a really good running back. He a good running back of his decade. He was probably say the Marshawn Lynch of his time, if you if you want to think of like 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 that, you know. Didn't really say much. He didn't really talk much. I don't believe so. But he's probably one of the most forgettable guys in the NFL Hall of Fame by now. But but he is a Hall of Famer too. So um, give his tip your hat off for that too. So we have Lenny Moore's number nine. Number eight, Marvin Harrison. Now I know what you're thinking. Why'd you put him in that high? Well, I got my reasons. I got, especially for the number two spot. So I'm going to get to that shortly. But Marvin Harrison, he he was a great wide receiver. He had great hands, too. He can catch the ball, anything. He entertained you and never spoke a word. Back when, and he was a um, eight-time Pro Bowler, three-time, um, what did I think of, three-time, all, all first-team All-Pro, then two-time receiving yard leader. So, anyways... He had some great stuff around talent around him. He had he had a lot of he had a great quarterback, which I'm gonna get to him shortly. You all know who you're talking about. He's one of the best one of the part of the best combos of all time. 
But yeah, he was an entertaining guy to watch. Despite hating the Colts, I, enter I entertained him a lot. He and I liked watching him a lot. He was a great player. He was like the Jerry Rice of, of that decade in the late 90s and early 2000s. He was really good. He was a really good player. But, you know, you know, all, all in all, he was a Super Bowl champion, too. You know, he was part of the good reason why the Colts won it in, in 2006. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that right now. But, you know, anyways, he was really good. He, I mean, you got to give his all respects, to Mont. So, anyways, number seven, Dwight Freeney. Now, Dwight Freeney was a, I forget, he was a defensive back, I think. Or he, he was part of the... Backup uh, linebacker core or something like that. So, but anyways, he was picked up in the 2002 draft, first round, pick 11. He was a great and and from, right fresh from the start, he was really good protection, uh, great linebacker guy. He was like the Peyton Manning. Oh, great! I just ruined it. Y'all not? Yeah, I know what the Peyton Manning thing now is. Anyways, you know, I'll tell you what where I rank Peyton Manning. But you know, but you know, he was he was one of the the light. The linebacker cards at that time, and the, and the defensive side where he when he was at the time, but he was he was a seven-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro. He part was part of the hundred sack club with I forget who other other players. I think uh, I I can't think of the players' names right now. It's not on the top of my head, but anyways, yeah. But he and he was I think he was in the two thousands decade all decade run too. I, I could be wrong on that, but. But anyways, he was part of the, he was like the defensive guy of Peyton Manning, which which I'll get to Peyton Manning in a minute. So number six, Benjamin James. Now here's a guy who was was coming off a tough act to follow. He was a guy who wanted to replace Marshall Falk when he left um, to go to St. Louis Rams to be part of the greatest show on turf. And he came in by storm and he was a, I think he came in ninety eight as a first rounder. I think think it was a first rounder. I, I could be wrong, but 98, 99, I forget what year it was. I thought it was 98, but I someone correct me if it's 99. I knew it's one of those times, but he was picked in the first round, picked number 4. And right right then from the start, he was he was like the legion of zoom or something like that. He was a really great running back. One of the greatest running backs I've seen. But anyways, he was a he was part of the um Part of the uh, all-time franchise leader club with 9,226 um, yards in his career. Then he was part of the 10,000 yards rushing club after that. Then I think he over 10,000 yards in his career. The only thing I put him in number six, though, was the... Um, by the way, he was a back-to-back -back, um, world... Back-to-back uh, -back, um, rushing champion, too. And he was part of... I think he was a part of the Colts Ring of, Ring of Honor. But the reason why I put him in number six because... He left the Colts in 2005, I think. Then he went on to Arizona. And he had a great run over there, too. And he got them into the Super Bowl with Kurt Warner. And you all know what happened with that one against Pittsburgh. But anyways, if he would have stayed, I think he would have been would have won a Super Bowl right then and there when, on Super Bowl 41. But still, he was a great running back to watch. He was entertaining. I mean, he was a, all right. He was a really decent hit. It's between him, Curtis Martin, and Sean Alexander battling it out for rushing titles each year, for the, if I remember correctly. But, anyways, I think he was part of the All-Decades team, too, in 2000. So, so he, he was really good. So, he, he was really decent, really decent to watch. But, I like to see people more, do like that more often. But, who knows? But, whatever. But, we'll see what happens from there. I, I think he may be in the Hall of Fame, too. So, he should be there. But, anyways... Number five, Jim Moore. Now I know what you're thinking on that. You probably re and you know what re the reason why I put him in there, because of the playoffs, right? Yeah, playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> I can't get enough of that. I still watch that all the time. Yeah, that's the reason why I put him up there because, because all because of that rant he did in 2001. That was awesome. That was entertaining. I mean, I still get enough of that. You know, Jim Moore. If you're watching this, I don't. I don't think you are, but sorry. But you know, I love it. I mean, it was really not. Really nice, sorry, but really nice. Got me entertained, got me laughing, you know. But if I meet you one day, I'm not gonna do that in front of you. I promise. But anyways, you know. But anyways, taking a look at his resume, he was a great coach too. Besides that, all that. I mean, he he was 48 and 13 in the United States Football League. He he was a one-time champion there in 1985. Then before he went to the Colts, he was the head coach of the Saints and got 93 and 74. But he was 32 and 32 as a Colt. But the only problem is 
he couldn't win in the playoffs. He was like Mar uh, Marvin Lewis at, at right now. He couldn't win in the playoffs at all. I mean, the one team, the one game that really got him where he is number five now was in 2000 when they facing the Miami Dolphins in the wild card game. Then all of a sudden they went to overtime and they blew it right in, right in the end. And to lose the game right there. And Miami Dolphins went on to the next round and got lost to the Oakland Raiders in 2000 in the playoff run. So, anyways, but yeah, but he was a great coach, too. He's one of the best coaches that never won the championship. And won a, never won a Super Bowl, I would just say, not championship, because Jim Moore won the United States Football League. So, I would consider that a count on that. But, anyways, he was really a, what, one of the underrated coaches, and he's a Hall of I would put him in the Hall of Fame for that. I mean,. He was really, really excellent coach. He took two bad teams and turned them into playoff contenders. Then grabbed some other legendary players after that. And, and, and one guy, he when he stepped down, they replaced um, one other guy, other coach. And they, which I have him on the, on, on the, I don't have him on the list, but I'll, I'll tell you in a minute what I'm going to do. So, anyway, so, number five, Raymond Barry. Now, you know, Ray, you heard the story about Raymond Barry, you know. I'm not going to spoil one other player I got on this list, though, but you know who I'm talking about if I do it. He had a great quarterback that he worked with. He was a six-time Pro Bowler. He was a part of the 75th anniversary team, you know, 50s decade team, 50s anniversary team. I mean, he was a he was a great team to, guy to watch. He was entertaining. I think he was a second-time All-Pro team. Someone correct me on that. He had six, 630 run receptions, 9,275 receiving yards, 68 touchdowns. I mean, he was a, he was part of one of the other great combos I'm going to talk about afterwards. So, anyways, since he was part, of, he, he was definitely a Hall of Famer. But he had he had some good great coaching success too with my Patriots too in the in the 80s, and he got him in the Super Bowl in 1985. And unfortunately, they got dominated by the Chicago Bears. They got really killed, 46 to 10. But everyone was betting on Chicago that one. They had a they had a great defense. They couldn't hold them up. So. I wasn't alive then in 1985, but yeah, but still, part of the history and Raymond Barry on that point, though. Yeah, Raymond Barry was an excellent player. He was really good. But anyways, number three. You're gonna, guy's gonna rag me on this one, which I got my reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing, so. Anyways, number three, Peyton Manning. Now, this is where I get Peyton Manning on. Don't get freaking out on this one. Because I got my reasons for Peyton Manning. Don't get me wrong. Some people say he should be number two or number one. But I got my reasons why I got where he is where he is right now. But Peyton Manning was a great quarterback. One of the best Colts quarterbacks since I'm going to say. I'm not going to say who, but you have an idea who it is. But anyways, he was a 14-time Pro Bowler. Seven-time um, first All-Pro team. Five-time MVP, you know, the last one he got in 2013, you know. But two-time Offensive Player of the Year, three-time secondary, I mean, three, secondary, three-time second-team All-Pro. I mean, he he did a lot for the team, though. He did really good. And, you know, he had a lot of great memories with Tom Brady, too. So, yeah, but, yeah, definitely. I would definitely put him in the top three. But he's not in the number one in my book, which... Yeah, not, I'm not doing it because I hate him. I mean, I'm not a fan of Peyton Manning, but, you know, I, I would put, some people put him in number one, which I don't blame him at all at that. But So I'm going to go with my um, my last two picks right now. And number two, John Mackey. Now, you're all saying this. Why are you putting John Mackey in there? Well, my reason being is I grew up watching football. I mean... You know, Tom, Tom Brady's my idol. You know, I grew up watching Tom Brady all the time since I was 12 years old. But way past before Tom Brady's time, though, I had the idolize of the tight end position. I mean, I, you know, every every play says they want to be a quarterback or something, but I, I always liked the tight end position mostly. I mean, I tried to do quarterback thing, but I, I just, I didn't have the arm to do it, but I had really great skills of catching and then running then um guarding too like they do everything in that position and that's why i like the tight end position i'm not gonna say who i'm gonna idol who i idolize as a tight end player but that's another topic for another time but anyways but john Mackey, he was part of the rain berry system too he was two-time nfl champion three-time all pro five five time pro bowler yeah all 60s decade team all 50s decade team 
I think it was a 75th anniversary team. I don't know about that one, but anyways, he was a um, really great, great player. One of the greatest tight ends of all time. Just think of him right now as uh, Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, you're probably thinking, you know, he, he started the receiving position. No, it's like, if we look at him at highlights and all that, it's pretty much like John Mackey's position, though. He's not like a... And, and um, Rob Gronkowski's not a... Um, a Kellen Winslow tight end. He's a um, John Mackey tight end. And I'm definitely supporting that. And tight end's one of the best positions I like. I mean, that's one of my favorite positions. That's the position I liked when I was growing up. So that was the one I liked football when I started like going and all, so et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, tight end was the one that started for me. I mean, and I always play tight end and like street football and high school football. And like, and I did it in gym class and all that. But, anyways, yeah, that's my reason I got number two because of. The all tight end thing. So, anyways, before I get to the number one pick, and you probably have an idea who it is, here's a few honorable mentions. Adam Vinatieri is one of them. Now, the reason why I have Adam Vinatieri because he started with my New England Patriots. If he would have gone with the Colts first and went to the Patriots after that, it would have been a far different story. So, I put him in the honorable mentions because of that. Then G Jim Harbaugh with his great success in the mid '90s. Then he got them in the into the championship game against Pittsburgh, and they lost. Then, you know, he had some good moments. And Jeff Saturday, a six-time Pro Bowl, and two-time um, first-team All-Pro, and one-time second-all-team pro. So he was, like, the center about with Peyton Manning. He was one of their big big guys on, Pey on Peyton Manning's side. And he was the key guy from that, that comeback performance in the AFC Championship game. And I'm still having nightmares, one of the nightmares on that one. But, you know, I'm over that now, but... Anyways, number one, John Constantine Unitas, as known as Johnny Unitas. Yes, Johnny Unitas, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. The, his story started off when he was selected in the got in Pittsburgh Steelers. They caught him, then the Colts picked him up. He was a backup, then he came into the pitcher, and everything was history from that point on. Point on. But Johnny Unitas is number one for all his success. Then 10-time Pro Bowler, four-time... Um, MVP, three-time Super Bowl, three-time Pro Bowl MVP, excuse me, Super Bowl champion and Super Bowl five, which I think John Mackey, too, by the way, was in that Super Bowl, too. But he was part of the 50th anniversary team. He was 75th anniversary team, five-time first team, and second-time all-team pro for both times. But, you know, but he was a Mr. Clutch. He was one of the greatest clutch quarterbacks of all time. I'm sorry. You guys are debating Tom Brady and um, Joe Montana. You want personally I pick Tom Brady for that, but if I had to choose, it was third position on that with Johnny Unitas, Joe Montana, and Tom Brady. Johnny Unitas comes first when it comes to mine, because Johnny Unitas invented the clutch position. And here's the thing: why I put him in number one in that case. He didn't have a green dot in this helmet. I don't think um, Joe Montana had a green dot. Which now with all these players and they have a green dot on their helmet, you know, and all that they're doing. Communicating with system with the head coaches. It was Johnny Unitas in his own place. That's it. Nothing else. And when Don Shula, which Don Shula, I meant to put on my honorable mentions too. Because he started with the Colts before he went to the Dolphins. No, if case nobody knows. But anyways, when Don Shula came in in the 60s, he it was a game against Philadelphia. I, I forget what year and what week it was. But anyways, it was fourth and short. Don Shula sends us a field goal team out there. The butt, Johnny United sends it back on the sideline, calls a play, scores it in for the touchdown. Crowd goes nuts. Then, then Johnny United goes to the sideline and go. Then Don Shula says, "Then nah, Johnny, don't do that to me again." And, and um, Johnny United goes, "Coach, you got that wrong. Don't do that to me again." But he was a, he had a great player like he was a big personality like that. He was a clutch guy, and he was the reason why they won Super Bowl. Uh, I mean Super Bowl. Uh, 1950 NFL Championship, the greatest game of all time. The reason being is because what what he did in the overtime period. It was the first televised game. It was the first um, overtime game. And at that point in time, nobody knew about sudden death overtime. It was was the first one. Nobody even knew what was going, going to happen. So Johnny United says, let's just play until we win. So up the field he went. And, and, no, and no, he didn't go for the field goal like they would do today. And I'm glad with the, all the field goal range, what they do now in the overtime, what they did now. Score first win, but now, if you kick a field goal, you give the team another chance, that's it. I mean, 
I like that, but I think they should extend that for the touchdown. Then if you give them another chance. But that, that's another topic I'll discuss another time. But anyways, what Johnny Unitas did, he goes out in the field and he said, we're going to just go until we win. But he never bothered kicking a field goal. He just went for the touchdown. And he thought that was how the game won. And that's what happened. He, but he, the only thing is he didn't rush it in. He didn't pass it in. He rushed it in. But he could have got it in for a game when he touched on as a pass by Raymond Barry. But he gave it to the running back. I forget who running back. I thought it was Lenny Moore. But, but then after that, that game against in Yankee Stadium in 1958, that was one of the greatest football um, games of all time. One of the greatest games ever played. That's why they call it that. And that would put with the NFL on the map for that. That would started it. Then the aftermath with the AFL coming into the picture and all that. That's why Johnny Unitas is number one. All those clutch performances he did. I think if you want to talk about clutch performance, Johnny Unitas has to be first. He's number one. Number one Colt and number one greatest Colt of all time. That'll do it for me. I might do top 10 videos a little more often than none, but I don't know. I'm going to start doing how the season rolls along, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I'll do some in the off season or maybe the playoffs, but anyways, that'll do it for, for me for my top 10 greatest Colts of all time. So I figured I'd return the favor for um, Kyle Snyder, a.k.a. Clifton, so for doing about his rivalry with the Patriots. I'm going to do it with my rivalry with the Colts, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, so I'm just a little success on that, so. Anyways, I'll, I'll see you guys again tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, for my uh, NFL picks. And until then, I'll see you then. Good luck on your Monday night game tonight. Bye.